Welcome back, my fellow knights, to another battle for Mountain Blade Bannerlord. Today we're bringing you a three-part battle that takes place in Mortonell. Remember that every single unit you see on the battlefield today is a real player. Want to know how to join these events in future? I'll show you how at the end of the video. We start today's episode following the Imperium Pulse Gear, also known as the IPL. I feel like we don't always get a good enough snapshot of what it's like to be cavalry, so today we're trying something different. We're going to follow these guys for a while, see what they see from their perspective. The speed at which cavalry move gives them an opportunity to get behind the enemy forces and catch them off guard. Rather than heading directly to control point B, these guys are currently taking a roundabout route, hoping to get through undetected. It can be risky because at this point they have no idea where the enemy forces are. As they go over this ridge, they could head into an ambush. Okay, things are looking good. There's nothing over this hill. Let's see what's around the corner. All right, lads, things are about to get spicy. I can see the BRE. They're unaware they're going in for the charge. Oh, yes, and they catch them completely off guard. That, my friends, was a textbook charge. Well played to the IPL there. As cavalry, though, you don't want to stick around. They're going to fly out of view once again, look for the next opportunity. As we head around again, the troops on the right seem more prepared. They've got their spears out this time. The IPL decide not to engage and head down the hill. As they head down the hill, the main BRE force comes into view. Montfort spot the cavalry and try to block them, but it's too late the IPL sneak around the edges. The horsemen bring things around and crash into the back of the infantry. Some of the cavalry are lagging behind and the infantry manage to take them out as they become more aware. Still a successful charge, but a few losses taken. And here come the BRE cavalry getting the jump on the IPL with the momentum advantage. The IPL have no choice but to retreat and regroup. Let's shift our focus now away from the cavalry and see what's happening elsewhere on the battlefield. The Coalition have now taken control point B, which means the Bretonian forces must come towards them. Corona Sibiricus are a little bit out by themselves here. They fall back slightly to rejoin their allies. The Coalition have archers positioned on the cliff top there, which have a great vantage point over the battlefield. Nearby, I can see Almagarvas there and SVCI. And of course, my totally unbiased favorite clan of all times, the Kingdom of Hordaland in their blue shields there, looking very epic if I do say so myself. Similar to Corona Sibiricus, they fall back to the clifftop, hoping to give the archers a better vantage point and let the enemy come to them. The rest of the coalition do the same. But wait, what's this up on the hill? The BRE cavalry come charging in Lord of the Rings style. They have to jump over their allies and into the battle. The Bretonians move themselves into position, making sure to spread out along the coalition line. Corona Sibiric is there once again out by themselves. They need to rejoin their allies or they're going to get surrounded and defeated in detail. It looks like they moved just in time and are able to rejoin our Magavas. I've got to say these archers are scary for the BRE. There's absolutely nothing stopping them right now. They more or less have free reign to fire arrows down on the heads of those troops below. Amazingly, the BRE seem to have driven a wedge between the two coalition halves. The coalition left flank seems to be boxed into this small area. They're going to need to do something about this and quick, otherwise they're not going to be able to get the kill ratio that they need. Moving up the hill, the BRE archers have found themselves a great vantage point. They'll be able to rain arrows down on the enemy forces from here. But the Kingdom of Hordaland seem to have spotted this. They've moved up the cliff tops and are coming down from above. It seems the archers saw that coming and are falling back. It's a small victory of sorts. The archers are temporarily stopped from firing. 
As the fight rages on, the Coalition right flank is completely destroyed. Now the BRE can focus their forces on the left. Seeing they're slightly outnumbered, the Coalition fall back into this narrow gap. They're trying to defend 300 style. If you can successfully funnel your enemy like this, it means their number advantage counts for nothing. Checking the numbers at the top of the screen, the BRE lead is slightly reduced now. The Coalition are beginning to bring this back. As we zoom out, we begin to see BRE reinforcements arriving from elsewhere on the battlefield. Still though, they're being funneled into that small gap. They're gonna need to gain some momentum with their superior numbers and push through. And that's exactly what they're doing. It's now looking really precarious for the Coalition as the BRE forces come charging through. We now have the last handful of troops on the battlefield. The Coalition seem to be losing, but we know from experience, it's not over till it's over. Although that said, I'm going to call it guys, it's definitely over now. Well done to the BRE in round one. But stay put because we're now on to round two. In this round we're fighting over control point C which is situated on the highest hill of the map. As the coalition approach the flag it becomes clear the Bretonians have already taken it and are prepared for their attack. Some great clans here today, I can see Brion there on the left, Castan in their blue shields and Muzalon. The charge order is yet to be given as the BRE shift themselves into better positions. An initial small clash breaks out on the BRE left flank between Corona Sibiricus and Montfort. As they hold the control point, the BRE are playing defensive and let the Coalition come to them. Almogarves smash into the Aquitani and Musalon shields. They're backed up by Knights Hospitaller, SVCI on the right there. I can also see Kingdom of Franks charging in. All Coalition forces are now committed to the fight. Due to the compact nature of this battle, it's going to be difficult for the troops to manoeuvre. At the moment, they maintain their shield wall and just hack away at the enemy forces as best they can. I think the winner here is going to be whoever can break out on those flanks and wrap their forces around behind the enemy. BRE archers are nicely positioned on these rocks, but it's going to be difficult to get some shots off. Our forces are blocked by the BRE infantry. As we sweep across the field, Kingdom of Portland are having some success on this side. Ah, oh, but the BRE cavalry are having none of it. They charge in, taking out so many of those troops. That looks so painful for the KOH there. But in the aftermath, the KOH banner is still raised. It looks like they just survived. As we move down the battlefield, the troop numbers start to dwindle. There's still quite a few left on both teams, but approximately half what we started with. Aquitani there looking very strong, a healthy number of troops still alive. Moving over here, the IPL get a great charge off on the Bretonian archers. Order of the Lake though are present and defending them as best as possible. I've no idea how, but Corona Sibiricus also have a few troops down here. They're harassing the enemy archers, stopping them from being effective. That's going to make a real difference. As we move across to the main fight, numbers now looking really slim on both sides, but it is very even. 60 on both sides as we speak. Oh, it's too even, guys. I can't call this one at the moment. Let's see how it pans out. Formations are now non-existent. All troops are spread out over the battlefield, just trying to get whatever kills they can. A few BRE archers remain and they position themselves on the high ground. That's going to make it difficult for the cavalry to get them. They seem pretty well protected for now. The coalition are pulling slightly ahead with numbers, but not enough for it to be a definitive win yet. From a cavalry perspective, I can see a lot of IPL, not many cavalry from the BRE currently. Historically, that's a good sign for winning the battle, but I can't say that for sure on this map. It's a very confined space. Cavalry will not have a big advantage here like they do in other maps. There seems to be a slight pause in the fighting as both sides regroup what troops they have left. 
think I can see predominantly cavalry and archers on the coalition side. The BRE do seem to have a few archers as well and a number of members from the Order of the Lake. They appear to be making a last stand on these rocks here as the remaining coalition forces attack. What's left of the coalition infantry seem to be hiding behind these rocks. It looks like they're preparing themselves for the final charge. Most of what's left seem to belong to the Kingdom of Hordeland. Oh my goodness, and now look at the numbers. There's about 21 troops left on both sides. The coalition were ahead. The BRE somehow have brought it back to a stalemate. Oh guys, given the battle that we've just witnessed, only the best of the best will survive till these late stages. What we're witnessing right now is a real clash of the titans. Honestly guys, this must be one of the closest battles we've ever had in this channel so far. The way it's going, I wouldn't be surprised if we're down to a 1v1 right at the end. These are the last moments, which team's going to take it? Oh, and the Coalition just take it by the skin of their teeth. On to round three. We start the final round with King Luan surveying the troops. Unlike the round we just witnessed, this setup phase is a little bit calmer. Art and Noir are getting their troops prepared for the battle ahead. The BRE head out and head towards control point A, which is in the valley below. Things are really confined down here. If the enemy came the other way, this could make for a really interesting battle. Fortunately, it doesn't look like the Coalition have made their way to this part of the battlefield yet. As the BRE infantry emerge from the valley, they're going to be careful not to get flanked by cavalry on both sides. As the BRE approach the town, it becomes clear that the Coalition have dug themselves in. They form up and await orders from their king. As the infantry form up, I can see the shields of Brion, I can see Aquitani, Mortanel, Musalon there as well. The Order of the Lake are also coming in from the rear. Although for me, the BRE are the enemy, you have to admit, they certainly know how to arrive with style. Gascony in reserve there, waiting to fill in the gaps. And the order to advance has been given, the BRE head into the town. Going up this side, we can see the Kingdom of Hordeland and SVCI laying in wait. But where are the rest of the coalition? There should be far more than this. Where exactly are they hiding? For some reason, Kingdom of Franks have charged in too early. They're unsupported by their allies. That right there is going to be so damaging for the coalition and might just cost them the battle. It happens guys, sometimes you get conflicting orders and things get confused. Right off the bat now, the Coalition is slightly lagging behind in numbers, but the IPL are here to change all of that. A great charge on the back of Montfort there, taking out a number of unsuspecting BRE troops. Ah, oh, but let's not celebrate too soon, BRE doing exactly the same to the Coalition forces from behind. As it stands, both teams have around 200 troops. The BRE are slightly ahead in numbers. Almagarvas emerge from the forest and charge in to help out their allies, SVCI. The Coalition have archers positioned on the hilltop. They'll be able to pick off any BRE troops to break away from the main force. Unfortunately, they've been spotted and driven away from their superior positioning. As we head back into the town, the fight is still in full swing. There are large numbers of troops from both teams still present on the battlefield. The numbers from KOH and Almagarva is looking very healthy at the moment. Gascony are having a hard time fending them off, but look at this, Musalon coming round the corner, taking the KOH off guard from behind. I can see a few Castan shields in there as well. Things were looking very strong for the Coalition, but that flank might have just spelled disaster for them. The Coalition are doing what they can, trying to take out these archers, but there's just too many of them. Back in the main square, the Coalition still hold the capture point, but their numbers are slightly down on the BRE. 
The only coalition banner I can see there is Corona Sibiricus. Where are the rest? The lines are completely dissolved now. It's just an all-out brawl, a fight to the bitter end. While the coalition seem to have more infantry, you can see in the distance over there, the BRE still have a host of archers. And the BRE take the capture point and raise it in the name of Bretonia. As the round draws to a close, the BRE are ahead now with twice as many troops as the Coalition. I think we can call it there guys, there's no coming back from this one. Well played to the BRE, they take the day. But stick around, I'm just about to show you how you can take part in these epic 500 player battles. These events happen every Sunday, every week. Want to get involved? All you've got to do is join a clan. I personally play for the Kingdom of Hordaland. You're welcome to join us. I'll post a link to our Discord in the description below. Once again, guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.